Hello everyone and thanks for tuning back in. Alessandro the Crypto here. I hope you're doing all fine. So welcome to another episode. In today's video we're gonna analyze as usual the Bitcoin price and also we're gonna have a look on the DXY and the CMEs where they closed yesterday because during the weekend the CMEs and the DXY is not trading. We only have here the crypto space trading at its own and I'm pretty sure that during the weekend we're gonna have here a nice breakout to the upside or to the downside but definitely until tomorrow we're gonna see a possible big move here towards 12k or towards $10,000 again. So let's see what are the technicals saying. So here in the one hour time frame, you can see that Bitcoin is still consolidating and bouncing around here. The support of $10,800 and the resistance of $11,000. We also had here two weeks here towards the $11,200 target, but so far we didn't reach. So I'm still waiting here for a possible move towards this direction up here at $11,200. And this is where we're gonna have to see if we they're gonna create a support or not. And I also have another target that could be in the cards here in case that we have continuation here to the upside. Then I watch out here for this $11,600. I will come back to this price level in the daily time frame. But let's start in the one hour time frame. Currently the RSI is in the middle line. We're still trading sideways as you can see. So I'm expecting here the price to move along this blue line here, this $11,000 a dollar area before we're gonna see a clear breakout here to the upside or to the downside and also here if you go into the Bollinger Band you can see that currently we are trading right between the two moving averages here and we are just waiting here for a clear move to the upside or to the downside so if you want to take a breakout trade then watch out here for the resistance at $11,000 and the support at $10,850 right now. If the price is dropping lower and closes also lower and even better if it comes up to confirm the new resistance or come down to confirm the new support, then this is where you should enter in your trade. And don't forget, you can always trade Bitcoin and all the assets that you want on these exchanges that I recommend you. You find them down below here in the video description with my links you can get up to $538 in bonus and usually I'm trading here on Bybit with my Bitcoin and Ethereum because here you can trade only these four coins if you need more you can use Femex for example or over on BTR you can trade everything even derivatives with your tether so you don't even have to own the coins so here in the one hour basically everything is moving like sideways and we're waiting here for a possible move to the upside or downside i don't have here clear targets yet in the one hour but in the bigger time frames uh, you can see my targets here for a possible move to the upside or downside if we're gonna have a, a breakout to the downside during the week and then the first target that i definitely gonna watch is here the 200 moving average here 10,600. 15 the one hour because this is I think where maybe we could have another bounce to the upside again if this drop is not going to be sustainable so I'm watching here all the 200 moving average in the one hour time frame and if we go over into the DXY you can see that we closed here at exactly $93 that is a very important key level for the DXY we are just trading sideways here for the last couple of days also RSI size right at the 50 so here in the DXY I'm still pretty confident that we're gonna see maybe a bounce to the upside here coming up pretty soon but overall the DXY usually is more bearish than bullish and that's why we should here always expect uh, the DXY to drop way way lower even though it looks like that we are trading sideways here so we are consolidating here after this massive drop that we had here since uh, March so that's why I think there are still chances that maybe here in the DXY we could see a possible breather to the upside before continuation to the downside. And if we have a look into the CME chart, you can see that we closed the CMEs exactly at $10,900. So wherever we are going during the weekend, make sure that you keep in mind this price level, $10,900 on the CME, because on Monday when we're gonna start to open up trading here again, we're gonna have a new future gap if we're gonna have a big bounce to the upside or push to the downside here. So watch out for this price level. 
And now let's go over into the four hour time frame because here everything is looking a bit more clearer in my opinion. We are here trading along the 20 moving average and it's right here at $10,880. And as you can see, also the 200 moving average is coming down now here and it's exactly at $11,000. $80. So in my opinion, if we're going to have a major rejection here in these price levels up here, it's going to be because of the 200 moving average that is coming down here. And it's also coinciding with the 0.618 Fib line here at $11,200. Only if we are able to break through the 200 moving average and also start to close four hour candles above and bring the 20 and 50 moving average above the 200 then I think we are in here for a big move to the upside and most likely also this $11,600 will not be the top, but we most likely gonna break it and continue towards 12K and 14K most likely. But as long as we are still trading here below the 200 moving average in the four hour, I'm still not pretty convinced that this bounce that we are seeing right now, it's gonna be sustainable and we lead into breaking 12K and also 14K. It is still possible, but as long as we're trading below the 200 moving average, I'm still keeping up my short position and I'm gonna add into my short until we're gonna break also this $11,600. But as soon as we're gonna break the 200 moving average in the four hour time frame, this is already a good sign that we could see continuation to the upside but so far we are still squeezing here between the 220 moving average and we're gonna have to see what will happen next because here the rsi is still above the 50 level which is bullish and this is what we want to see during an uptrend currently also my own indicator is quite flat here but trading on the upper area so there are chances that we could see continuation to the upside but if we're gonna fail here then the move to the downside could be quite huge and that's why you should be prepared for all scenarios guys because if you're getting rejected here i think that most likely we're going to test again 10k and maybe even go down towards $9,600 to also close the CME gap. If we're gonna reach also the 200 daily moving average at $9,100, this is also still in the cards, but of course not very likely if we're gonna have a big bounce at $9,600. This is what we're gonna have to see if we're coming down to those levels. And if we have a look into the Bollinger Band in the four hour, here you can see that currently we're also trading sideways here, but we are in the upper area, so that is bullish, even though the stochastic here is coming from oversold mm -hmm. conditions. So we could see a possible a retest of this $11,000 here based on the stochastic. The problem is only that the MACD and KST are shifted to the downside. So based on these two indicators, we should expect the price to go at least again towards $10,800, maybe even lower. But as I told you, most likely during this weekend, we're gonna just bounce up and down between the support and resistance in this consolidation wedge that we are in currently before we're gonna see a clear breakout to the up Side. But since this is also looking a bit like an ascending triangle, in my opinion, there is a high chance that we could see a breakout to the upside. And in that case, watch out for $11,200 and this target up here at $11,600. And why $11,600? Therefore, we have to go into the daily time frame because if you see this blue trend line here, this is the connection from the two tops that we had so far here at 12,500 and this one over here at $12,000, which is also very important level. And if we connect those lines, you can see that currently we're coming down to the 0.786 Fib line here at $11,600. And this is, I think, where we could also top out in case that we also are able to break $11,200. So only if you're really able to take out all these resistance above of us and also take out these highs over here, then I think we are in for 14 or $16,000 because in that case for now we have bottomed here and we're gonna see a big continuation to the upside and maybe until we're gonna close this CME gap, it's gonna take another few months or years before we're coming down to those levels to close the CME gap. Who knows, everything is possible because these CME gaps usually get filled in the CME chart, but you'd never know when. It can take hours, it can take years, no one knows how long it will take until those gaps are getting filled, but eventually they will get filled because in the past, like 99% of these gaps has been filled. And that's why I'm still pretty confident that we should maybe come down here, test these levels and then start a parabolic run to the upside, which we definitely gonna have. The question is only if we are able here to first come down 
test this support area at 9,100 to 9,600 dollar, close the CME gap and then start to take off here. The good thing here currently is that we are trading above the 20 daily moving average. The problem that I have currently is that we are testing always this 20 daily moving average and not up here this 50 daily moving average. And that tells me that we are trying to push a lower here from the 20 daily moving average. And the more we are testing it, the weaker it gets. And that's why currently I'm still a bit more bearish than bullish. I want to see the price to test the 50 daily moving average, the resistance up here and not every day the support down here at the 20 daily and that's why I think we still could see a possible move to the downside. Let's hope not, but I'm still in my short. I still think there is a high chance that we could see a possible move to the downside, even though 11,200 and $11,600 are still in the cards. And we can also open up the Bollinger Band in the daily because here this time frame is looking very bullish in my opinion. Currently we are trading in the upper area and we have all the way free to go up to the $11,600 up here at the top of the Bollinger Band. That's why I think $11,600 is very likely also to be reached maybe even during this weekend if we're gonna have a breakout to the upside and also immediately break $11,200. Stochastic is still overbought, that is a bit concerning, but you can see that the MACD and the KSD had a bullish cross and currently are shifted to the upside. So if here is enough volume kicking in and we are able Able to break $11,200 then I think $11,600 is coming up pretty soon and there we also have to see of course what will happen and let's open up also the weekly time frame because currently the weekly is still looking quite bullish even though at the moment we are not reaching the highs that we had in the last couple of weeks so that is what makes me a bit concerned that we have no strong bull power at the moment to push higher here towards this $11,600. But also here in this chart, you see that this price level up here is a very significant level in order to pass also this 12K resistance above of us. And if we are getting rejected somewhere in this area here between the 0.618 and the 0.786 Fib line, then be prepared to see continuation to the downside to possibly bottom out somewhere down here at around nine thousand dollar in my opinion but everything you're gonna buy between ten thousand to nine thousand dollar probably is really the last time that you will see bitcoin so cheap also in the weekly you can see that we are bouncing from the 50 level in the rsi which is very bullish and if we open up here the bollinger band you can see that currently we are still trading between the two moving averages so if this week is going to close above $11,000, then I think we are good to go towards here the $12,000 again. So most likely $11,600. And if we're going to take out 12K, then of course 14 and 16,000 are coming up in the pretty close future. But if this week is going to close below 11,000, then I think there could be another possible correction in coming towards the middle line here of $10,000. And if this time 10K will not hold, then watch out here for the bottom of around $8,000 in the weekly it is still possible that bitcoin is coming down to 8000 but not very likely so if we're really gonna lose this 10k i think most likely we're gonna bounce at 9k because there also we have the 200 daily moving average which should act as a very strong support and of course there we're gonna have a lot of bull power buying this dip up and at the same time we're also gonna close the cme gap that we have at nine thousand six hundred dollar the good thing here is also that the stochastic is cooling off even though we are seeing this pump this week. So this is a very good sign as soon here we're gonna bottom in the stochastic and have a bounce we will have a lot of you left to the upside. MACD and KST are looking a bit toppy here so let's hope that here we're not gonna have a bearish cross otherwise this could lead into a big crash to the downside but so far they are still shifted to the upside which is of course bullish. All right, guys, and with that said, I'm going to wrap it up for now. Don't forget to moon up the likes, also subscribe to the channel, and you are very welcome to join our free Discord trading chat. It's completely for free and everyone is welcome. You can also contact me over there if you're interested in watching my 24-7 own indicator, which is giving buy and sell signals. And please also join my Twitch channel. you find the link also down below here. So thank you very much for watching my friends, have a great weekend and we're gonna see us all in the next one. Bye!